Hi, this is Rick. Today we're going to destroy an entire city and make it look like a war-torn area. So we to, to start off, we're going to just destroy a single house. And to do that, I'm going to use a logic. Uh, go, to, go to your F5 systems, go to logic entities, choose a game logic. Okay, so we drop down a game logic, which I already have. The trigger is not necessary the moment dump in a little bit of code so set damage one for each nearest terrain objects to this object within a 20 meter radius the reason I put the trigger down is so that you can kind of get a center position so you can see what radius you need to to use it's quite useful because if you really want to you can literally just remove a single object like a wall or a tree or something like that okay so in this instance we're going to redo we're going to remove everything within a radius of 20 of this game logic so let's have a look and see what that looks like okay so that was that was nice luckily no one was harmed no one was in the house at the time okay so now we're gonna, let's say we want to trigger the destruction of this house as opposed to have it destroy itself immediately so we'll remove this and we'll dump it into the into the trigger and we'll change this to logic one and instead of activation on none we'll change that to radio alpha so when radio alpha is fired it's going to execute this little bit of script so within 20 meters of logic one it's going to destroy all terrain objects nearest terrain objects Okay. The radius of this trigger is unnecessary, so we can set that back to zero. So now, theoretically, nothing should happen. Nothing happens until we fire up the trigger with a double zero. And goodbye house. Okay, so now, let's do this on a much wider scale. We'll get rid of this tree and we'll get rid of that logic. And um, actually, no, we won't. We'll keep those. And I'll make this, I'll put the logic in a central position. Okay, so let's say we want to remove everything along this road. Each of these blocks, obviously, when you zoomed in like this, is 100 meters. So that's one, two, three, say so 300 meters. So it's approximately 600 meters. Okay. So go back to our little trigger. Change this to 600 to 300 because that's the radius. It's going to take a bit of a hit now from a from a frame point of view, simply because it's a radius. It's going to destroy all the trees and everything within that radius. So it's going to slow down quite a bit when I fire the trigger. Okay, so driving on the road now. So basically, good, good job. If you were going to do this for, for a multiplayer game, then you would presumably do this right in the beginning of the game so that the damage is already done um, and and you'd be much more selective in terms of distance I would probably say the better solution would be to change this let's just say um, make this 50 meters change this back to zero just get rid of that so I can see the proportional radius across the, the town it's slightly bigger than that let's make 60 meters Okay, now take this logic, don't need the name, we can just change this back to this, make, make that 60 meters, um, okay, 
put that there and then we'll copy this down the road it's going to be a lot less intensive and it's not going to hit the server as much as the uh, 600 meter radius option that we used just now which is very very inefficient okay so we're going to stop over here because this these little triggers and uh, markers i've set up later on just to show you the artillery script that will come in just now and remove all of the buildings okay so we're going to destroy all the buildings down this road just past the corner and they're going to do that and it's going to do that automatically when the mission starts Presumably you wouldn't be in the area at the time when this happened and so you wouldn't necess you wouldn't see the, the process of distraction. I mean that took a minimal amount of uh, minimal hit on the frame rate, literally about five frames per second. into a wasteland fairly simply um, probably a good idea to maybe cut to black or fade to black your mission in the beginning when you do the distraction um, okay so now we're going to look at a, an alternative we're going to look at a, an artillery script I'm going to take my little vehicle and I'm going to dump him up on the hill here so that I can get a nice vantage point Okay, so uh, let's maybe move him a little bit further down the hill. Hopefully we won't get killed by this. Okay. I'm just going to bring in the script now. Bring in the script now. Okay, I've set up the script. Um, let's just go to the debug console. Turn it to night time as well. Um, yeah, that should do it. Okay. The um, it checks to see whether this error message here, this explosion done, is basically just a, an undefined variable. It's used for join in progress clients or JIP clients. To to once the once the script is run, it it, it sets the um, explosion done to true. Uh, that script, the script checks to see whether the explosions have been completed already in the event that uh, you don't want each uh, join in progress client to run the script again because otherwise you'd have multiple uh, explode or multiple artillery scripts running simultaneously. This is a slight delay of about 10 seconds on the script initialization. Um, and then it comes in.
that error is just an undefined variable. Okay, so that's... Are you finished? You can see some of the artillery was fairly inaccurate. <laughs> but the damage is quite extensive, so let's let's go back to daytime. Remove this script because we don't want it running a second time while we drive down and have a look at our damage. So let's get out of here. Okay, so the artillery effect script consists of um, an array of explosive devices that we're going to trigger. Um, you can see quite a number of them have been repeated. And the reason for that is that um, it's going to process through this, so we're going to get a nice assortment of explosions. I've also declared these sounds, and I have got sound samples for these different sounds. In the description.ext, if we go to the mission folder, um, there are the sounds, and in the description.ext, uh, I declared under CFG sounds um, the various sound effects that are going to be generated. Obviously, they're going to generate their own sounds, but I like to sort of put additional sound effects in just to make it more realistic. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, then it um, basically just counts the number of explosive devices um, and it sets a, 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 a velocity or a position vector or position array for each of the objects and randomizes the positions. Um, it then um, sets pause for the bomb and basically uh, offsets them by the X and Y coordinates and um, and it sets a, a height coordinate as well. Um, it then sets damage for each of the nearest terrain objects to the bomb position that we've declared or created over here. Um, it then divides the... Um, it checks the distance from the player, distance to the bomb, um, and adds a little bit of a cam shake. Um, it sets the velocity of the bomb because the bomb is in the air. It sets a negative velocity because some of these explosive devices require um, that they are spawned in the air and have a negative acceleration in order to explode. Um, it then selects a random sound. Um, it uh, plays the sound using remote exec. Um, and it does that for each of the areas that are specified up here. Um, it then sleeps for a random time up to three and a half seconds. And then when the script is complete, it uh, sets the variable for JIP clients to true. This guy over here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want, we want a couple of smoke and fire modules. I mean, there are lots of ways of doing this. Let's put a smoke module on this house over here. Uh, particle density, 10. Particle lifetime, 50. We'll change that to 120. Particle size, 2. Particle density, make this 30. Okay, particle size, okay. So that's fine. So we have a 
smoke module. Let's put down some fire. So drop down some fire on here as well. Also make make the fire go out a little bit earlier. So make it 90 seconds. Effect size. Uh, let's say make it three. Uh, particle density. Make it 50. Okay. Nothing too extreme. Let's just try that out. Obviously it takes a while for the particles to propagate, so you would set this up. Too small. I'm gonna have to experiment with that. Obviously, you can place the fire module wherever you want. At the moment, um, that's reasonable. Now, if you wanted to, you could remove the trees. So let's get back to the editor now. We'll, we'll remove dead trees in the road. So we'll do uh, go back to logics, get a game logic, dump down, and we'll look for an array of trees within, let's say, oops, let's say 100 meters of this logic. So that's going to create an array called trees. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drop down a little trigger. In the trigger, we're going to drop a little bit of code. I'm going to make this true. So it's going to look for this the amount of damage within the array of trees and it's going to hide those objects okay but you can see the trees did from a timing point of view they were immediately removed so it destroyed all the buildings obviously you can where you can specify that you don't want trees to be destroyed, uh, just buildings. Um, okay, and one of the other things you could do would be to uh, change the environment so that it looks as though there's been, a, you know, like the aftermath of a, of a military strike. So uh, let's look for post-processing, let's make it uh, brown, commit time, we'll commit it immediately, um, let's set the time of day to sort of early evening. Maybe we need that a little bit later. Okay. It's enough light to give us the impression that is um as a sufficient light to light up the particle effects.
accentuating maybe a bit more. It would be nice if you could trigger that smoke on a building once it's destroyed. So let's take the smoke module. We'll leave it as it is. Just dump it on the house. And we'll use this logic to um, destroy the house. Actually, we don't want to destroy the house right now because we need to find out what the object ID is for this particular house. The problem is in the, old, in the earlier days of ARMA 3 and, and prior to that in ARMA 2 and, and so on, you could pick up object IDs through the in the editor, but we can't see object IDs any longer. So we don't really know, we don't have any definitive uh, information about this house through the editor at the moment. But what we can do is we can uh, go into the, go and find my player. Where the hell are you? Okay. Get back in your vehicle. Okay, so I'm going to stick myself outside and I'm going to go and get the object ID in game. Okay, so the smoke module is firing, but that doesn't worry us. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the object ID. So I'll say, Jesus. Cannot type to save my life today. Okay, that should do it. Let's see. Okay, so now wherever I point, I can get the object ID. So in this instance, the object ID is 871821. Alright, so back into the editor. So we go and get another game object, game logic. We'll drop the game logic down and we'll put in some information, little script basically is going to um, specify that variable building one um, relates to this object nearest object 871821 which is the ID that we just picked up so when building one when the damage to building one is greater than 0 0.9 whatever then we want to fire the the module so we'll get a little trigger Dump a trigger down, sync the trigger to the module. Damage building one greater than 0 0.9. Okay. So this trigger is going to fire when this condition is true. Building one, BLDG1. Did I write that right? Down right. BLDG1, right. So when building one, which happens to be the nearest object to this logic, 871821, so it's very specific. When the damage to that building is greater than 0 0.9, this trigger is going to fire, it's going to start up the module, which is the smoke. So, okay, so let's destroy the house with this little logic, 20 meters, which is about right. Okay, so let's go back in again. So now, when the house is destroyed, we should see smoke. <laughs> close to the comfort and so you can see the modules kicked off and it's starting to smoke the house okay I hope some of these things have been useful um, if you have any queries or comments please leave them below and uh, I if you can I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and click the like button to encourage me to do more hopefully I will uh, learn how to type and speak a little bit more clearly Cheers.